So now, how can we be sure that our minimizing the training error uh, will lead to a better model uh, on when applied to the test set? So this is an example, uh, an iterative example from the machine learning literature uh, that actually uh, aims to illustrate the concept of overfeeding and underfeeding. So suppose we have a, a set of data, set, data sets of trees and other objects, other botanical objects, or the flowers, etc. And we want to be able to learn the concept of being a tree. So uh, we could use a natural language in statements. So we could come up with just sentences that tells what's a tree from, from what's a non-tree. Uh, an example of that, we could come up with, an, with a sentence that tells uh, a tree has um, a brown bottom part, right? and a green top. So this describes a tree, but however, if it is necessary we have also bushes and other things, some other things can be mistaken as trees while they are not. So this is a very general, uh, actually a very general concept. This is general uh, concept, uh, general description of a tree. So this is our first, first uh, function, F1, that describes a tree. A second possible function uh, describing what's a tree could be, um, let's give as much details as we can about the tree. So it could be that this tree is five feet long. And um, actually, this tree has three roots and has uh, four major branches, major branches. And we could go on and on on describing very specifically uh, what's this tree, maybe the shade of brown, the shade of green, and let's say, and the 50 leaves, etc. So I'm going to provide a very, very specific uh, description that tells what's a tree. The trick is that this description would match this tree exactly. So it will be actually fitting this tree perfectly. Which means that if we have other trees in the data set with all the variations, with all the features, maybe they have 40 leaves or they have four, uh, four roots, these trees won't be classified as trees using this uh, second uh, function F2. So this is too general, and we'd let many non-trees be, you know, be classified as trees. And this is a very specific description that will let actually no trees be classified as tree because it's so specific to this specific uh, tree here. All right, so the idea of machine learning is to explore everything in between. What would be the sweet spot, the best hypothesis or the best function uh, F, right? Uh, I'll call it O for optimal. What would be the best optimal hypothesis or description that tells me what's a tree? So maybe we could do something um, uh, in between in which we specify uh, what's um, uh, what's a tree, but without really going too general or too specific. So it could be like um, the bottom is a trunk, the bottom is woody, right? Is woody um, with uh, between five and uh, seven feet. We could say there is a, a lots of leaves on the top, lots of leaves. It has branches. It has between uh, three and ten um, uh, roots. This is something more general in which that would let uh, pass uh, many trees, but would also not let pass bushes, because bushes are probably shorter in the terms of uh, their, the height of their trunk, and so on and so forth. So between the three hypotheses, uh, we would prefer then uh, picking up this one, because it has more chances to make less error in predicting that an object is not a tree or an object uh, is a tree. At the core of machine learning is what we call structural risk minimization which actually um, uh, aims to find the best um, possible models given us some problems. So uh, on the x-axis, what we have here is the uh, complexity of the model. So we have a set of models going from the very low complexity models to very high complexity models. So for example, the model that tells uh, that the tree has a brown bottom and a top green is a low complexity model. It's very simple. Um, the other one that has very specifics about the number of leaves, number of leaves, uh, branches, and so on, is a high complexity model. On the, the y-axis, we have the prediction error. And here we consider the error on both the test training, training set and test set. So I'm going to plot two curves, one for the training set uh, in green and the test set um, in, in red. So I'm going to see the behavior of the error when we vary the complexity of the model. 
So you could expect that with low complexity models, such as our simple sentence about trees, we're going to let lots of non-trees passing as trees. So we're going to make a lot of mistakes, which means that the prediction error will be quite high for the will be quite high even for uh, the training set itself, right? We expect it to be also high on the test set. So if it's not making doing well on the training set, very, it's very likely that it will do poorly on the test set. Uh, for the uh, high complexity models, we actually, um, in, the, in the example of trees, our model will be able to match the training set exactly. So we are going to really find a model that overfits or learn by heart our training point. So the test, the training set, the training error will be quite low because we really learned exactly what was on our training uh, data. However, when we plot this function f into a new data set of um, uh, trees and uh, bushes, etc., we're going to do poorly because the, the, the complexity of the model was so high that it wouldn't let any other uh, tree make, um, make it uh, through the test, um, test error. So basically, we would have uh, a high um, test error and a small training error. The art of uh, machine learning is to find something in between. Good models would be somewhere in the area in the middle in which you don't what we call underfeed the data by making uh, poor models in the terms of they are too, too simple. And we won't overfit the data because your models will, uh, otherwise your model will be learning the data by heart. So how to find a good model? Something in between is, to f is at the core of uh, machine learning methodologies. Okay, so let's illustrate this concept of training and testing and structural risk minimization uh, with respect to this example on regression. So suppose we want to predict the income in function of age, right? So remember, uh, we have plotted the data as it points on a 2D space. And the idea is to find different functions or different prediction models that give us um, a prediction of um, a future instance. So for example, this line here is a linear model that goes through the data points, or this second curve in blue, or also this complicated curve here. In the first example, we talk about underfeeding or high bias because this line does not really fit well the data. In the last example, we talk about high variance of overfitting because we came up with a, with a curve that actually goes through each and, each and every single data point in the data. We really learn the data by heart, and it's not a good model uh, either. So the two models are going to be on the extreme sides of the uh, structural risk minimization uh, curve. The third one is more promising. It's just right. We find something that goes through most of the data points but doesn't fit them very well, but it doesn't fit them poorly either. OK, so how do we avoid underfitting and overfitting in general? To avoid underfitting, we need to find models that act at least do well on the training set, right? So this is uh, easier than um, tr avoiding overfitting. To avoid overfitting, what we can do is, in general, try to avoid complicated models. If we you remember, we find this complicated model that describes trees, this model will make poorly on any other object except those seen for training. So in general, use simpler model. And the way to use simpler model is, for example, to reduce the number of features. Uh, for example, if we don't look at the number of features for trees would be number of leaves, number of branches, number of uh, height of the trunk, and so on and so forth. So the more we're going to put in the training set, uh, in the feature values, the more the model will try to include all of them. So what we can do is to remove uh, some features to avoid really uh, finding models that would use all of them. We could also do some model selection, and this is something uh, that will be left for the machine learning course. We could use what we call regularization, which is, OK, so we have a lot of features describing the data. Let it be. Let's use all of them. However, let's reduce the importance or the impact of this, the, the small parameter values. So if you have a lot of features that contribute a little bit, a little bit to the model, let's try to regularize that. So we're going to make a balance between learning the data and also uh, having all the features having an impact on the um, uh, reduce their importance in the final model. The last possible things we can do is to do what we call a cross-validation, which is to estimate the test errors. And we'll see in a bit what this means.